Hi everybody, welcome back to IndyCar. Uh, this is my uh, Wednesday evening, shall we say, um, European election special, we'll call this tonight. Now you'll notice straight away that uh, I'm actually Gordon's evil twin brother with the haircut and no beard. I um, actually decided just to have a break from the beard today, so left with the tash, nice haircut hopefully, uh, and looking a bit clean shaven today for a change. Anyway, back to the subject at hand. So, European elections are coming up next week on the 23rd of May. And in these elections, we'll be asked to vote for a party. The party that we want to represent us at the European uh, Parliament. Now, this will mean electing six individuals from Scotland to represent various Scottish areas or regions. And of these six, we hope to get as many as four. Now, it's very difficult to get more the, than about two uh, MEPs because of the so-called de Haunt voting system, which is a little bit like the second part of um, our existing Holyrood election system, where the, the party with the most votes will win a seat, and then there's another round of counting where the party with the most votes has its votes halved or a certain proportion taken away, and then the next party below that that has more votes than that gets the next seat and so on. So there's this complicated arithmetic which leads to a, a fairer sort of share out of um, seats based on the number of votes actually cast rather than the first past the post system. So it is kind of uh, fairer but on the other hand it's very unpredictable and it is designed to prevent one party winning all of the seats which is what you would expect it to be. So in order for the SNP to do reasonably well, we need to vote a lot because in order for us to win more than two seats, we have to have a gigantic number of votes so that even if the, the de Haunt system does half it or, or take a third of the votes off it or whatever the, the actual calculation is, that we've still got more than the next best party. According to uh, John Curtis, the... Um, the go-to guy for the BBC when it comes to polls uh, and looking at trends. Curtis claims that the Scottish nationalists, as he calls them, uh, are likely to have a, a very successful campaign. He's predicting up to four seats, which, to be fair, even by John Curtis's standard, is a ridiculously um, over-optimistic um, estimation. Could be that he's trying his best to... Um, to give us the idea that we don't actually need to go out and vote SNP, that it's in the bag somewhere, or that it isn't in the bag, and you do need to get out there and vote, and you need to get out there and vote in bigger numbers than ever because of the way the system works. Now, in the past, you'll remember that the SNP actually managed to bust the system at Holyrood and got a majority in a parliamentary election system which was supposed to prevent uh, that sort of thing from happening, and yet the SNP actually managed to confine the system and broke it. It's possible, but only possible if we all vote like crazy in huge numbers, to do a similar thing this week, uh, this coming week with the European elections. Now, you might be thinking, well, what, what's the point of a European election if we're going to leave the European Union anyway? And I must admit, I thought the same thing when, when I was thinking about this. Remember that no matter what happens with Mrs May's deal, whether it does go back to the Commons or not, we will be leaving the European Union on the 31st of October this year because the European Union has said categorically it will not give any further extensions than that. They've been extraordinarily generous to us already, um, giving us such a long time. So the fact of the matter is that no matter what we vote in this election, um, the UK will be leaving the European Union. Now, you might think, well, what's the point of Scotland electing six MEPs if it's not going to do any good, if they're not going to be able to take their seats for very long? But the point of this really is it's not uh, an election necessarily because we want uh, to, to beat everybody else or because we, we want to have more than four SNP candidates successful. Well, we do want that. The overall idea of this vote is to show the European Union and also the European Parliament that Scotland is very much a European country uh, and that the vast uh, majority of the population is in favour of both independence and 
remaining for the moment as part of the European Union, or at very least trading uh, with the European Union using a free trade agreement. So nothing says that better than voting for SNP MEPs, in other words, electing people who stand for independence and for being in the European Union. If we do that, then we will prevent people like the Brexit Party, UKIP, the Tories, the Labour Party and the Lib Dems from getting any seats in Scotland. It would be, I think, probably uh, unrealistic to expect that we could prevent maybe a Labour or a Liberal Democrat from getting a seat. But I would like to think that we can keep the Tories, UKIP and the Brexit Party out of Scotland and have no more anti-European Union uh, representation representing Scotland because it sends the wrong message. We've had David Coburn for years now uh, and if you, uh, if you ask anybody who David Coburn is in Scotland they won't know who you're talking about. He is the guy that looks like Mr Toad and he believes that Scotland should stay part of the UK and he believes that we should leave the European Union. In fact he thinks the European Union is you know, the Antichrist and it should uh, it, it should be left at all costs. So why would anybody vote for somebody like that to sit in a parliament in Europe where he wants it destroyed, where he wants to be out of it? Wouldn't make any sense. So I'm, I'm basically saying to you tonight that the best thing that you can do for the country is, is to vote for the SNP because that sends a message to the European Union, a very clear message. Scotland is not an anti-European country. It never will be. And no matter what England does, Scotland will not be leaving the, U the European Union. Whether or not uh, we become independent immediately or not, we're not going to leave the European Union. And remember, Scotland is a country in a union with the UK. That does not mean that Scotland has to accept the decision that the English government makes to drag our country out of a union with Europe. I think... Uh, if nothing has happened by October and we are still no further forward and it looks like this hard Brexit is going to happen, there are only two choices for the English government and that is either a hard Brexit with no deal, in which case ever, all bets are off and we leave empty handed with empty pockets, with no deals, with no trading arrangements uh, and paying high taxes and tariffs to trade with Europe. Or the English government can say it's going to be too destructive for the UK and we're going to repeal uh, Article 50, we're going to retract it, we're going to withdraw it. And that would end Brexit for good, it would stop it from happening. But would the British government have the backbone to stand up to people like Farage and actually do that? Personally I don't think they will. It looks very much as if the Tories are jumping into the Farage boat at the moment. Nigel Farage is actually planning a tour of Scotland. Remember the last one they tried? <clears throat> he had a tour of Scotland and never even made it to the pub door last time. This time he's planning to have a rally uh, of Brexiteers, of, of Scottish, supposedly Scottish Brexiteers, uh, to rally to the cause of Brexit in Scotland. I don't know if he'll actually manage to get over the border this time, frankly. I think the man is uh, an absolute lunatic. He... He preaches the gospel of leaving the European Union, but he has said that his party will have no manifesto because a manifesto is all lies. So basically, he's the head of a party that has no idea what it's going to do except Brexit. That's its one policy. The one policy is to leave the European Union. And the English claim that the SNP is a one-trick pony only wanting independence for Scotland. It's not. The SNP has policies across a huge wide range of very important matters across Scotland. Everything from energy to industry, the environment to farming and fisheries, to innovation to medical health care, all kinds of things. We have policies on everything and yet Farage has nothing. All he has is the politics of hating other people and trying to shut them out. He wants, remember, to privatise the NHS in the UK. He wants that to happen and he wants American healthcare firms to come in. Uh, and so we all have to buy insurance policies from American companies to buy our own NHS back from ourselves, basically. 
we're going to be paying for something that already belongs to us. That's what Farage wants. Farage believes that people with HIV shouldn't be allowed to come into the UK, regardless of how healthy they are or whether they are, have a, a zero viral load. He doesn't care. It's just, with, with Farage, it's all or nothing. There, there is no middle ground. He's an extremist. He, people claim he's a populist. I think populist is the wrong word. A populist makes it sound like he is a pop star of some kind. But he's not really. He's just a man who can whip a crowd up into a frenzy. These are the politics of pitchforks and torches. These are the politics of lynch mobs. Nothing to do with what's actually right for the country at all. Now that brings me back to uh, other parties in Scotland at the moment. And people have been posting online copies or, or photographs of the kind of electioneering leaflets that they're getting from the Conservative Party, or should I say the Ruth Davidson trademark party. Ruth Davidson mentions Nicola Sturgeon in person at least 12 times on one leaflet, and the whole leaflet has one policy on it, no to a second referendum. If you vote for Ruth Davidson's, the Ruth Davidson trademark party, then we will stand against a second independence referendum. Well, I'm sorry, but Ruth Davidson's party is currently polling at 10% uh, in the opinion polls. I hardly think voting for them is going to stop anything very much from happening. And remember, Ruth Davidson doesn't even mention Brexit in her poll, in her election campaign leaflet. She wants you to elect a Tory to be your MEP in Europe which is what her party is about to drag the entire UK out of. And she mentions none of this, nothing at all about Brexit or how Scotland will fare or guarantees that she will put in place to make sure your job is safe. Nothing, nada. She is another Farage, another empty vessel. Somebody once said an empty barrel makes the most noise. Well, this is true. Farage makes the most noise. He is full of rhetoric but no substance. Ruth Davidson, full of anti-SNP rhetoric, no substance. Nothing positive to say, no message, no um, no agenda of what to do, no five-year plan, no manifesto, no pledges, no promises, nothing. Neither Ruth Davidson or, or, or Nigel Farage can promise the Scottish people a single thing that's worth a token because they don't have any policies. That leaves us really with a choice, a choice between the SNP and Greens. I know some people who can't bring themselves to vote for the SNP. Maybe they just have a, a long-term dislike of them, I don't know. But they'll probably vote for the Greens because they would be the next best choice. But for me, even though I, I am at heart a Green, I'm going to vote for the SNP. I'm going to lend them my vote for this because I believe that this is part of the road to independence. This is part <clears throat> of proving to the European Union uh, that we are loyal to Europe and that we are not bailing out of Europe with, with England. We're not going to allow England to drag us out. We're not going to be led out of Europe by Westminster at all. If we say that loud enough, we're not going to need any Section 30 because the European Union will see the way we voted and they'll know that the Scots take Europe seriously and don't want to leave it and that because we are not being given any other choices the only choice for Scots to avoid leaving Europe is to leave the country which is taking us out of Europe and that would be for us to dissolve our union with England and to replace it with some kind of trading arrangement so that we remain European citizens that we remain part of the European Union, we benefit from its funding for rural infrastructure, for scientific projects, for research, for medical research, uh, for farming and food production, that we remain linked to that key market and that we have freedom of movement. We can go on holiday, we can visit friends, we can work abroad, uh, we can go on exchange visits for students. You know, you can go and do your doctorate in a European nation and not have to pay a fortune for that. So there are a huge number of reasons why this election is important, but the biggest one really is to send that message to the European Parliament that we will be there in numbers. We do support them. Scotland is a loyal European participant, unlike England, which wants out. Nigel Farage 
maybe he's popular in England. Maybe people in England, he's he's you know he's the Messiah. He's a a banker. He's a stockbroker. He's a suit. Right? But he seems to be able to convince the working classes in Yorkshire that he's somehow one of them. Um, just because he drinks beer and smokes cigarettes doesn't make him a working class man. But this is the way he's presenting himself uh, to, to these people. He will not answer any questions on any of his previous policies or his opinions on things. None of that will be answered. He will avoid answering those questions at all costs. The message is coming home loud and clear. It's leave Europe, leave Europe. Europe's bad, Europe's bad, leave Europe. That's it. That's all you're going to hear from him. Um, it's it's the same... I find myself making the same criticism of Farage that Ruth Davidson makes of uh, of the Scottish National Party, that they're a one-trick pony. But... Farage really is a one-trick pony. He hasn't even got a party. He's got a bunch of people who say, I'm standing. But nobody knows who they are. Nobody knows how they were selected. Nobody knows where they live or what they do or what they've done. If they've got a criminal record, have they been vetted? Nothing. You don't know anything about any of these uh, Brexit c candidates. So it is important, and I want you to vote for the SNP on the 23rd and I want you to, to actually turn out and do it because although this might not seem relevant to you because of Brexit it's very important to Scots to get out and vote it might not be important in England but it's important here and we send that message and we send it in huge numbers Europe must hear the message from Scotland that we do not want to leave the European Union we are being held against our will by England at the moment they, if they continue to deny the Section 30 order, we will have a referendum without them, without the Section 30 order, and we'll win it, and we will announce our independence, and we'll take it, because that's how independence is won. In other countries, independence has been won at the point of a gun. Here, we at least do it by uh, peaceful means, by democratic means, and for the English government, and I'm picking my words very carefully here, the English government to deny the Section 30 agreement. It's not a permission, incidentally. It's an agreement between the English and the Scottish parliaments to respect the result of the ballot. That's all it is. It's not a permission slip from England. We don't need them to have the ballot. We are extending the courtesy to them that we will sign an agreement with them that means we will abide by the result. Even if it goes against us, We'll abide by it. And we would expect them to do the same thing because it's perfectly reasonable. Nobody should fear democracy, but the Tories fear it. They fear it because they know that they're going to lose this time. That's why they're hanging on to the Section 30 order. That's why they won't give it. They could give it, and they should give it, and by all laws and morals around in the UK, and by all custom and precedent, they should give it but they're going to delay it as long as possible. You heard what um, David Mundell said, that there would be no Section 30 order until after 2021, which is the date of the Scottish uh, elections, the elections to Holyrood. So he's basically saying you can't have a Section 30 order to have your referendum until your mandate, which you won at the last uh, elections, has expired. In other words, he wants to wait until we've got no mandate so that we can't call a referendum to then call a referendum and then he'll give us a Section 30 order. Nonsensical statement for him to make. He's just basically toying with us and trying to provoke a, a response. So, all in all, um, the situation is that we'll leave the European Union on Halloween uh, unless something drastic happens in the meantime. And so we really need to have our independence referendum before Halloween. And I think many people are coming, you know, sort of round to the idea of having it in September again and having a rerun, a, a sort of Groundhog Day event on the, on the 18th of September so that we can run the referendum ourselves, run it fairly, without the miscounts, without the cheating, without the tampering and without the threats and without the, um, the scaremongering. And we will win it. And we'll win it because independence is a far more attractive proposition and staying in Europe is a far more attractive proposition than anything that Farage or Davidson can offer us, because they haven't got anything to offer us. 
as Winston Churchill once said, all I have to offer is blood, sweat and tears. And I think basically that's what Brexit will amount to. See you later. Bye bye.